हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट के आई आई ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन सो दिस इज द एपिसोड सेवन ऑफ आर एंटेरा डिजाइन इन द सिमुलेशन कोर्स एंड टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द नॉन यूनिफॉर्म एंटेना एरे सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट द डायपोल एंटेना फोल्डेड डायपोल एंटेना जागी उडा एंटेना टू पॉइंट एंटेना एरे एंड पॉइंट यूनिफॉर्म एंटेना एरे so in this video we are going to first see the simulation of n point non uniform antenna array then we are going to verify the results with the theory part right so in the non uniform antenna array we are going to talk about the chebyshev uh, antenna array then the optimum antenna array and then the binomial antenna array we are going to start with the binomial then optimum and then the chebyshev antenna array so all of these are really interesting uh, antenna array simulation and if you have performed already performed the previous experiment on n point uniform antenna array then this simulation is going to be really interesting and very simple for all of you so let's start with the binomial antenna array i hope you all have seen the previous video and simulated the previous results so some of the basic steps i am going to skip and i am going to show you the most important steps only so this is my 3d cat designing module you can click it and then you can go to the start option so now this window is opening we have to make an antenna array of five elements so i am taking the first wire i am locating it at the point 0 0 minus 100 0 0 100 100 and i am taking the diameter to be 1 okay Okay, so I am taking the second antenna array. So here I am taking it at location hundred zero minus minus hundred and hundred zero hundred. So I am again taking the diameter one material copper. So this is how I can take the five five wires. So the third wire will be placed at the two hundred zero minus hundred and two hundred zero hundred. So diameter is one material is copper this is how i got the third wire now the fourth wire i am taking at 300 0 minus 100 300 0 plus 100 diameter is one again the material is copper again i am taking the fifth wire so fifth wire is at 400 0 minus 100 and 400 0 plus 100 so again diameter is one material is copper now i have to take the current source so i will be placing all of the current source on all of the wires right so you can place uh, randomly at all of the wires then we can uh, change the location of these current sources as well so here you can see i have all of the current source at all of the wires so now this is the first current source it is located at the point 400 0 and 0 and the amplitude is 1 and the phase is 0 this is my second current source i am taking its amplitude to be 4 for the third current source i am taking the amplitude to be 6 for the fourth current source i am taking again the amplitude to be 4 and for the fifth source i am taking the amplitude to be 1 for phase, all of them phases are 0 so you can see this is my n point non uniform binomial antenna array so i am going to simulate the results so i am instead of taking 101 points let's take just 11 points so the output is coming so you can see the results and you can compare the results with the previous uniform n point antenna array we have already seen how we can find out the n point uniform antenna array where n was 5 again i have taken the five element wire and now we are going to see the results please uh, take out your results for the previous simulation and you can compare it so first of all i am going to see the radiation pattern so this is how the radiation pattern will be looking like for n point binomial antenna array right so you can increase or decrease the number of elements as well and when you increase or decrease the number of elements you can again verify the results how the output will be changed how the gain and directivity is changed 
when I increase or decrease the number of elements in the binomial array. So this is your task to change the results and you can uh, find out how the output we are going to change, right? So you can change the number of elements to 7 and you know, right, that what is the binomial distribution for 7 elements. I am going to show you the Pascal's triangle from which you can find out the coefficient for 7 point antenna array as well. And then you can change the amplitude of the current source and you can find out the results. It is that simple, right? So now after the binomial antenna array, let's discuss, I am just minimizing the results. And now we are modifying our results to make the optimum distribution. So the first, uh, dis first uh, amplitude would be 1 only. So the second amplitude would be 1.6. The third amplitude would be 1.9. The fourth amplitude will be again 1.6. And the fifth amplitude would be 1 only. So this is already 1, I am not changing it. Again, I can simulate the results. So we will compare it with the previous results for the binomial distribution. Let's wait for the simulation to get over. Okay, so now compare the results. So this is my output. This is my output radiation for optimum antenna array, right? So you can click on the W option so that all of the wires are also visible to you. So now I am going to show you So this was the binomial distribution and you can compare both of them. You can see the maximum and the minimum values. You can justify your results with the help of theory part when I'm going to show you the theory part as well. Now let's talk about the Chebyshev polynomial. So here the amplitude will be 16. Here the amplitude would be 0. You can see we have the 5 point Chebyshev polynomial. We have 16x5 minus 20x cube. So here at the third element I have the amplitude minus 20 and then 0, then 5 and then 0. So for minus 20 I am taking 20 and I am giving phase to be 180 degree. Okay, so I'm not giving any current distribution to it because you know the current amplitude would be zero. So there is no need. So now I'm going to simulate the results. Okay, so the output is simulated. Now I am going to see the radiation pattern. So you can see this is the radiation pattern for the Chebyshev array, right? So this is how you can compute all of the radiation patterns. So here if I again click the W, so you can see the various wires also, right? So now I am going to show you all of the three results.
so you can see all of the three results you can compare the values okay so here you can see we have the different minimum and maximum values if i have taken the five point binomial array and the five point optimum array here in the chebyshev array you can see we have more of the unidirectional pattern and some minor lobes are also present right so now again uh, let's compute the result for the uniform antenna array I just need to change uh, some of the parts so I am going to show you the results and then you can again compare all of them. So here we have the amplitude 1 phase 0. I am going to make all of the amplitudes to be 1 only and the phase 0 only. Okay, so now again I am going to simulate it and then we are going to compare all of the four results. Okay, so you can see the radiation pattern for endpoint uniform antenna array. Okay, so you can again click the W and you can see all of the wires also. Okay, so now all of them are visible, you can compare all of them. So, isn't it amazing? You can see all of the radiations in 3D, you can uh, right click on any of the radiation and you can see the polar plot as well. So, you can see this is the polar plot and here also I can see the polar plot and uh, here also. So this is how I can find out the polar plot of all of the radiations as well. So I hope you understood the simulation part. Now we are moving towards the theory part. Okay, so now we are moving towards the theory part of endpoint non-uniform antenna array. We have already seen the simulation. So in the endpoint antenna array, we have already talked about the uniform antenna array. In the uniform antenna array, we had taken the five elements, the amplitude of all of the five element was one. So when the amplitude is same, directivity is good. Here we can see the directivity or the half power beam width is 23 degree, which is good. But there is a problem that 24% of the energy is getting wasted in the minor lobes. So now we are moving towards the binomial array. We know the binomial expansion of A plus B raised to power N, it would be A N B 0 plus N upon 1 factorial A N minus 1 B 1 plus N N minus 1 upon 2 factorial a n minus 2 b 2. Similarly, we can come up to n factorial upon n factorial a 0 b n. So, here you can see the amplitude of the antenna elements follow the binomial coefficient. So, I had taken 14641 amplitude, right? So, we had taken all of the amplitude of the current sources in this uh, ratio only and you can see the directivity is less, okay? It is 31 degree. Directivity is lesser as compared to the uniform antenna array. N now here we have one advantage that there is no minor lobe. So energy is not getting wasted in going to the minor lobes and no fake target detection would be there. Okay, now coming to the Pascal's triangle. I am again showing the Pascal's triangle in the upcoming slide as well. So we can make the Pascal's triangle to find out the amplitude of any point of antenna array. How we are making the Pascal's triangle that I am going to show you in the next video. Coming to the optimum antenna array, we have for the optimum antenna array, we have the amplitude to be 1, 1.6, 1.9, 1 1.61. Here we are having the higher directivity than compared to the uh, binomial array. So here you can see we have the directivity to be 23, but you, you can see we have some minor lobes as well. So these minor lobes are reducing the energy. 
okay if there is some energy loss also due to the minor loss plus there could be false target detection also in the optimum antenna array coming to the edge distribution edge distribution is 10001 so which means i have only two points in the antenna which are working rest all of them are non working so it can be easily justified from the two point antenna array right so here also we have the lesser directivity and more minor lobes right so coming to the pascal's triangle how we make the pascal triangle so for the zero at row i have only one for one first row i have one and one how i make the second row okay so the extremes are always one i will add the uppermost two values and i will get the center value right so again extremes would be one here and here the extreme would be one i will add these two values so here i will get 3 here i will add these two values 2 plus 1 would be 3 so this is how i will get all of the values in the third row coming to the fourth row one and one are the extremes coming to the mid values so 1 plus 3 is 4 3 plus 3 is 6 3 plus 1 is 4 and 1 so i computed all of the results for the fourth row only coming to the fifth row in the fifth row i have 1 and 1 at the uh, edges now 1 plus 4 is 5 4 plus 6 is 10 6 plus 4 is 10 Four plus one is five, and one at the edge. Coming to the sixth row, one and one at the edges. Five plus one is six. Five uh, plus ten is fifteen. Ten plus ten is twenty. Ten plus five is fifteen. Five plus one is six. So similarly, you can uh, compute more uh, number of rows and more elements in each rows, and you can make any array. So if you increase the number of elements, you can find out the amplitude of all of the elements as well, and then you can compare the results. So you can make any row and any number of arrays in the binomial array. So coming to the Chebyshev polynomial. So this is the Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind. So we have various uh, polynomials for here for the zeroth row. We are representing the zeroth row with the first Chebyshev polynomial that is t zero. It is one. For t one, it is x, which means uh, for the first element I have the amplitude one, and for the second el element that is at the x x raised to power zero location, we have the amplitude zero. For t two x, we have two x square minus one. This is my uh, Chebyshev polynomial for the third row. Okay, so for x square, we have the amplitude one. For x, we have the amplitude zero, and for uh, the final coefficient, we have the amplitude minus one. Here, we will be taking the phase to be one eighty degree and the amplitude to be one. Similarly, I can have t three x, t four x, t five x. We had the polynomial for the t five x, and we made the simulation results for the t five x only. Okay, the fifth Chebyshev polynomial. Similarly, we can make the planar antenna array as well. This is your task now. You can increase your results, and you can find out. Out the further results for the planar antenna array as well. So you can see if I am using the planar antenna array, the minimum and the maximum values are going to increase, which means that I have the higher and higher directivity and the higher and higher gain if I am increasing the number of elements in the planar fashion as well. So for planar antenna array, I have more gain. So you can see this is uh, the gain. And the uh, radiation results and the field pattern for the planar antenna array. So I hope you understood each one of these things. If you have still any kind of doubt present in any of the topic uh, that I have discussed till now, you can put the doubt in the comment, and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you will be meeting me soon in the next episode, which is going to be the final episode, and it is a really interesting one. So let's meet soon in the next episode thank you so much